Hello, everybody. Good morning. Hope everybody is surviving their coronavirus. And uh, my name is Dr. Josh Silver. I thought I'd use some of this time to share with you something I'm working on. I'm uh, I'm working at Imagine X Functional Neurology. After before this, I worked at the Pierce Clinic uh, doing advanced orthogonal, and so we did ad- Advo for five years. And now, now I'm working on my functional neurology skills. And kind of my hope is that by correcting ocular misalignments or central vestibulopathies that are contaminating head tilts that ultimately we can try and make the upper cervical adjustment hold longer and that's kind of my goal so i'm mainly treating a lot of migraines and concussions i'm doing a lot of dizziness and vertigo but it's been really cool for me to bring advanced orthogonal into this practice here in santa barbara and incorporate it with functional neurology so i've been spending a lot more time studying funk neuro lately but when I came to Santa Barbara, I didn't bring an x-ray machine with me. So instead, what I had to do was find a dentist. And Dr. Harcourt, my boss, knew a dentist who's got a Plan Mecca cone beam CT. And so I took that and I started applying all of my Advo knowledge onto how to do an analysis onto one of these CBCTs. And I've got a little system going for orthogonal. So I'm going to show you, you guys how I'm doing that. I'm definitely open to criticism. This is a work in process, but so far I feel that overall my analysis is much more accurate using cone beam and the possibilities are infinite because there is no more imaging placement error. You can literally transform a cone beam into anything you want. You can see any image you want and you can see it in real life. So I'm using a beautiful specimen here. For this that's myself and uh, this is what my skull looked like a couple months ago when I took my image but I do most of my work through the 3d so we're gonna go through 3d how I'm doing this so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing and hopefully we can build upon this together so I've got kind of a system and what I like to do is take off everything but the bone so you can just really see my head and we're starting from a zero 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 that's our reference plane. But the first thing I want to do when I'm looking at a scan is take out head tilt. So I'm just going to rotate it a little bit. I'm at a negative one degree rotation. And how we did this in Advo to measure head rotation on an x-ray, we kind of measure that lateral canthus to the lateral border of the skull and see if they're pretty close. I mean, that's really close, 0.07. So what we're going to say is that in order for me to take rotation out of this cone beam, we're just going to have to rotate it one degree to the left, negative one degrees. So I usually do this on a sticky note, but I'm gonna do it here for you guys since we're all digital today. I'm just gonna say negative one rotation, okay? So what I like to do at this point is start off with the AFP. So if we rotate me 180 degrees from negative one, it's gonna bring us to one or 179. And there we are, 179. So we know now that this is a perfect P to A view of me. And before I like to do anything, I just kind of like to take it all in, kind of look at the structure we got. You can kind of already see a low AFP on that right side, a little bit higher on the left, potentially misalignment or or, uh, asymmetry of C2. Like that looks lower to me than this, but does that look crooked? Not really. C2 spinous looks relatively that centered. And uh, to be honest, I'll show you how I do C2, but I've seen a lot more centered C2s than I think we thought we saw. But C3 spinous is totally crooked. I mean, the vertebra doesn't look horribly rotated, but, and that's kind of the limitation on this is that we can only get this much on top of the skull and we can really only see down to about C4, three, four, a little bit of five. So, I'm working with what I've got here. If you get a bigger cone beam scan, let me see it and we'll figure out how to do it. So let's just zoom in on my C1. Let's go up here. And I like to, I really like to just take this at a zero. I know most people look at it at a, a A to P view. So you're really getting that posterior arch line up and you can rotate your film any degree you want till you're really seeing it how you like it. You can already see it looks a little left posterior on this left. It also looks like it's moved a little bit up this condyle and a little bit down this one. So I'm guessing left posterior, but we'll see. So I like to 
kind of tinker with this angle till I find the one that kind of gives me just the best picture of all of these joints. It's not too specific here. And then I do lines. So I'm going to draw a line from the top of C1 to the top of C1. Looks about right there. There's another one for the posterior joint right here to right here. We can do very top of that TP. I mean, you can really use a lot of reference points, whatever you want. The more, the better. And then obviously the bottom of that. So once you have all these lines, I'm going to take all of them and line them up on the left so that they're all lined up right there. And what we like to do in Advo is look for a best fits line or what's most consistent. You know, if one's way up here and one's way up here. I mean, to be honest, all of these are crooked. All of these have asymmetries to them. And that's why you look at the range of different ones. I mean, even if we just did the top of C1, right there to the bottom, and you see a difference, now yeah, those look pretty good. You know that you're going to have one pillar that's higher on the other, and it will never truly be orthogonal. But anyway, take the best fits line, really looks like this one in the center, and I'm going to get rid of the rest of them. And what I'm already know is I've got a high AFP on the left, low on the right. If we zoom in on this, this is how I'm doing it. Probably not the best method, but I'm going to try and line this line up with the screen. So if I start rolling it, I know that I've taken out 2.3 degrees of tilt. And does that fit? We can modify that. See how that like really kisses the top of the screen really nicely? Maybe a one degree off, less than a degree, right there. I got 2.2. So what we know now is that the AFP is high by 2.2 degrees. And if we bring it back to zero, high on the left, okay? So I'm gonna put this on my sticky note. We've got an AFP, it's high on the left. And how high is it by? 2.2 degrees. AFP 2.2. We don't know what side it's on yet because we don't know what the laterality is. So I'm going to do that next. So let's go back to our film. We can restart it. Let's take the bone off. Let's go back to that negative one degree of rotation. So it's P to A or straight on again. Let's zoom in. And you can play with the contrast till this disappears. There we go. And I'm going to do as many reference points for the skull as I want here. We can do one there. I generally go off the orbits. And the reason why is because in Funk Neuro, we know the eyes need to be aligned, they need to be level with the horizon, and the orbits are going to give you the best picture of where that eye is in total. So I'll try and put that on top of the orbits here. I like to use these sutures as another reference point. You can do this junction if you want. Again, the more reference points, the better. I think the TPs are probably the worst. I think those can always be asymmetric. But um, anyway, if you're brave, you can try and do one on the teeth. I don't really trust that. Or I also have been thinking about the TMJ a little bit. That should be a relatively symmetrical spot on the skull. But now that we have all our lines, we're going to line them all up like we did last time. So let's come back out here. Let's put this one on top, on the left, on the left, on the left. We have one on top of the eyes on the left. Got it. On the left. Okay. So again, we're seeing kind of a big range. We want to get rid of the outliers. And if you can't, you just kind of pick the one that's most in the middle. 
Let me get rid of this one. Okay, this sorry, one. I got cut off there that for was... a second. But anyway, um, this is kind of where we were at, was that we were measuring averages off the skull. And so how I'm doing this is look at the best fits line for skull tilt. And we're going to compare the skull tilt to the top and the bottom of the film. And so if I start to pull this here, what it's kind of looking is that these lines are parallel with the film. I think I'm a little tilted to the left. So if I pull this down a bit, there we go. And we start getting that. Now that's dipping, it's too much. There we go. So what we're seeing right now is if I get this line representative of my skull tilt flush with the top of the film, it's at 0.2 degrees of roll or head tilt to the left. And that's what I have left 0.2 degrees of head tilt. Not too bad if I say so myself. Tilt to the left of 0.2 is what we said. Let's make a left... So if I have a left point two and I'm high by 2.2 degrees on that side, that would mean that my ACD is on the left by 2.4 degrees. 2.4 left ACD. And now we know that. So that's cool. We're all done measuring the ACD and we know that in order to get this film neutral, we need to have 0.2 degrees of roll in it. Negative one degree of rotation, 0.2 degrees of roll. So while we have the roll in, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go after our cervical spine view. So let's take it straight to 90 degrees, which would be 89. Look, I have a little ponicle there, I guess. But what I'm gonna do is take a cut through the top of C2, that kind of cuts off the whole superior surface of C2, but spares the dens. We're gonna come through here. We're gonna swoop under the C2 spinous, and then we're gonna get rid of everything else. And what we end up getting is that if we take the roll out, or the rotation back to negative one, we leave that roll of 0.2 so that this head tilt is taken out. We come straight under. Oh, I left a little bit of C7, didn't I? Or C5. Yeah, let's get rid of that. Then, voila. Here's your dens. Here's your C2 spinous. Here's your atlas. You can just see so much. And look, it does look like an anterior left atlas to me. And we know that because we know our ACD is to the left. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a screenshot of this. So let's go to snipping, new, screenshot. And I'm gonna save this as uh, Josh Silver C2. Got it? I'm redoing this analysis for you guys. Then what I also like to do is bring it back to neutral. When we have the head tilt taken out, let's look at the superior part of C1. So let's take it again to the side, 89. What I'm gonna wanna see is a superior articulating surface or that condyle right there, but I've got this mastoid blocking me. So what I'm doing is I'm coming underneath it and then I'm scalpeling that whole mastoid off. And that way, when I come back to neutral, let's go to zero, 0.2, I can see that surface right there. And again, I'm gonna make a nice scalpel cut 
try and take off as much bone as I can without disturbing that superior part of C1. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of all of this. And let's get rid of that too, just in case. So if we come back to neutral now, let's go to that negative one. Now I've got 1.2 degrees of roll in it. That's supposed to be 0.2. Close enough. There we go. When we come straight from the top, there's your C1 right there. Ain't she a beauty? Let's fill in the density on that a little bit so you can really see more of that bone structure. And here's our perfect C1 view right here. So get it till it's nice and pretty. You can see everything you want to see. I still feel like there's some, yeah, that's good. Let's pull this down here and let's do another snip. So new, all of that. And we're going to save that as Josh Silver trans uh, C1 rotation. Yep. Cool, you guys are following. Let's go back to our basics, refresh, take out the rotation, take off the skin. Let's go straight to the left. And the reason why is that we know we have a left ACD, right? But we wanna know where the transverse process is. So if we come in here, you can see my transverse process. And if you can't see it, you can look from the bottom. You can even come up from the top a little bit. Get a good feeling of where that is. And then bring it back out to straight lateral. Zero degrees of high or low. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to mark the TP across its body on that side of ACD. And... Typically what we do is we would compare this to the mastoid, but it can be very hard on plain film to see what side that TP is on and also which mastoid is which. So the method that I'm doing is what we'll do is we'll fill in the bones or the skin. So if you go to Angio and you just start filling that in. Dun, 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 dun we can see where my transverse process is relative to my earlobe, which is a much better visual landmark than palpation of the transverse process ever was. And I'm just really thrilled to have this type of view of that TP. So I save this one. Oh, let's do a new one of my left ear and save that as Josh Silver left TP. reset. Last thing we need is a cervical spine. And also I like to have one straight posterior view just for my records. I keep this on their listing cards so I can get a visual inspection aside from just numbers. So this is me straight lateral. If you want to do just bones, zoom in a little bit. You can also kind of look at head tilt here from the IOP straight through different structures. And See if that matches up at all with other things you're getting. But overall, I think the front of the skull is much better place to be looking. But I'm going to get a snap of this straight from the back. So we'll get that. And we're going to say that just as our posterior view. Cool. Let's replace that. And for our cervical spine, this one is okay to leave tilt in. I like to leave the tilt in, actually. You have to leave the tilt in. Let's come straight lateral on it to 89. 
And what I'm going to do for my cervical spine is I'm going to do a scalpel cut through that posterior arch and then straight down through all of these facet pillars and then trim all of that off. And when we see our perfect posterior to anterior view again at 179, here is the true neural center of our cervical spine. Something that we don't have to guesstimate anymore, something we can actually see on cone beam. Pretty tremendous compared to our history. So we're gonna do another snip shot of that cervical spine. And we're gonna save this one as Josh Silver cervical spine. Save and replace that. And that's relatively all we need from the 3D view. What we're gonna do after this is close that down and we're gonna come to the MPR view. And when we open up our MPR view, what you wanna do is center your crosshairs over your atlas and then you wanna take out rotation. And you'll see that this perspective right here is this perspective here. And when you rotate it, you're seeing that frontal from different rotations. You wanna take out as much of that as you can. So I like to kind of get it centered on the dens and then right through those front teeth. And to see if it's through the center of the rest of the skull, you'll have to move this one here to really see, is it going through that nose? Is it going through those teeth perfectly? And then the IOP, yep, it's on that. Is it on the posterior internal protuberance? Pretty much. If you wanna add one more degree of rotation, that should be good. Now, how we're gonna see our C over A really depends on what our S line is. And if your NUCA, you look at pretty much everything from, oops, Oopsies. You look at everything according to the S line. And if you do, you're gonna get a different perspective of your axial circle than if you looked at it from a shallower angle. And just look at how that C over A kind of changes as you change your S line. So deciding what the most accurate S line will be is gonna be a big topic for future debate because here's your axial is flatter, I'm sorry, steeper than if it's straight along that C2 border, and then it's more flat. And that's gonna change your C over A ratio, and that's gonna make the biggest difference in your math. How we did it in ADVO is that we would take a axial cut that was perpendicular to the back of C2. So if this is the back of C2, perpendicular to that, should be looking right over the top of that C2 at the angle C2 is positioned. And if you see it like that, then you're gonna see your axial circle, and then you'll see a little bit of a steeper condylar circle. And, and honestly, I prefer a steep condylar circle, a flatter axial circle, because it gives you more leverage during your adjustment. And I think that's important, although I also don't really think we should corrupt the math. I think it is what it is. But this is how I'm looking at it. And I'm going to just kind of roll through this till I get a really good looking C over A view. That looks pretty great to me. Let's zoom in on that. And then let's snap that. So we'll save that. And we're going to call that Josh Silver C over A. So we have all of our views that we need now. We should have six views. We should have C over A, cervical spine, a posterior view just for your listing card, an idea of where that transverse process is on the side that you measured it, a C1 rotational view, and a C2 rotational view. And to measure all of these, we're going to need another program called IC Measure. So here's IC Measure. It's a free program, and it's got a whole bunch of different tools under measurements. So what you're going to do is you'll go to Device, an import image. You wanna to wanna to make sure that this is on all documents. And I like to start out with my cervical spine. So if you open up cervical spine, you can get rid of these old lines. We can see the neural canal of the cervical spine. And 
in other methods, what we've done is we'll look at the dens and then we'll look at the C2 and we'll split the difference to guesstimate where the center point of that neural canal is at C2, but it's a guesstimate and there could be a symmetries or abnormalities or that C2 spinous bending it one way that throws off that perspective. We'll also do the same thing for the bottom of the cervical spine. And what I like is if we can just simply do measure, circle, and center point, we can see where the center of that C4 body is perfectly. We can see where the center point is relative to the lateral margins. We can do any reference points you want because you can really see everything so much more clearly here. So that's what I'll do is I'll do the center point of the neural canal, the lateral borders of C2, and then I'll do the dens. And if you want to do more reference points, feel free. This is kind of what we're seeing. Here's my right, here's my left. How we're going to measure that is you use the angle tool and you're going to draw two lines. But what's very important is that this bottom line is flush with the bottom of your screen. You want that to be totally flat with your screen and you see it's a little tilted. That needs to be set perfectly just from the beginning because it's gonna measure all of your tilts. What we'll do is we're going to put the bottom of it on those center points that we measured. And then we're gonna put the top of it best fits through all of these different indicators and points. So that's pretty much where I'm seeing it. And I'm measuring an angle of 89.58. Since it's acute, it means it's leaning this direction, which would be left. So my spine is leaning, my cervical spine is leaning to the left by approximately 0.42 degrees. I'm gonna call it 0.4. So let's paint that. Here's my cervical spine. It's leaning to the left. And what did we say? By 0.4 degrees. Well, if my AFP is high, 2.2 degrees, and I'm leaning away from that by 0.4 degrees, then that means my cervical spine will be on the left, CS left of 2.6 degrees. Got it? That's our cervical spine measurement. We're all done with this one. We'll go to device, device, import image. Next thing I like to look at is the C2 rotation. So here's C2. And what we're gonna do with all these points is we're gonna first put one on the left and the right of the dens. We're gonna put this one on the bottom and the top of the dens. We're gonna put this one on the left and right of that C2 spinous. And then this one, and this one we get rid of. So if we take this angle tool, we put it on the center of that C2. And then we put it on the dens. And what we can see is that if this is my right and this is my left, then my C2 is spinous is kicking off to the right by 0.75 degrees, which is not a big C2 rotation. And quite honestly, I've overall been seeing much smaller C2 rotations since looking at cone beam. And the reason why is this is the first time in history that our measurement of C2 rotation is relative to the skull. Because in ADVO or AO, we would say, well, if the DENS is to the left of that C2 off of the frontal by this much, it calculates a 15, 16 degrees of C2 rotation. And the truth is, is that ma that math is just wrong. It's not even ballpark close. And if we look on this perspective, which gives us a more true representation of that C2 rotation, I find that they're much smaller. So I'm measuring 0.75 degrees right here. And we're gonna go under here. We'll do a little arrow on that right side and say right 0.75 degrees spinous. Okay, so like I was saying, we've got a right 0.75 C2 
C2. Cool. Last thing we need is C1 rotation. So we'll come back to this film, get rid of one of those circles. And if you can see your transverse foramen, I like to put this on the foramen. Sometimes you can't. So we'll take this angle tool and then I like to put it on a couple different points on the atlas to kind of guesstimate how the rotation is off of the bottom. And so, you know, this is a problem because we're looking at the C1, C2 joint, not the C1, C0 joint on this. But you can still kind of say, look, it looks like this is anterior on that left side. This looks like it's back. I'm measuring off of just that inferior posterior lateral mass. Mm, 177, that's like 2.6 degrees anterior rotation. Is it the same on the transverse foramen? It looks a little bit steeper off that. It looks about a little bit more than it would be, probably closer to that. So 2.2 degrees of anterior rotation on C1. But let's actually use the measure, the view we got for this, which is C1 rotation. And again, you can put these inside those foramen if you can see them. Mine are kind of weird, but most people's anatomy up here is kind of weird. This is the opposite. Now we're looking from the top. So here's the right and here's the left. And so here's the right. Does that line up with that posterior part of that joint? That's pretty close, actually. I might pull it down just a degree. How's it compared to those foramen? Not even close. How's it compared to those transverse processes? Not even ballpark close. The TPs would give us the view that this is actually a severely posterior rotated C1 on that uh, right side or anterior on that left side. This is kind of looking a little different. Let's start up here. There we go. Let me look at the anterior part of C1. somewhat closer to those foramen, somewhat closer to those TPs, but right on that joint, which is what I think is the most important thing. So bring that even a little bit closer. And then this joint down here, that's what I'm saying. So if we come here, what it's saying is that this is acute, 178.4 degrees. That's 1.6 degrees off of 180. I would say that my C1 is likely rotated anterior on the left, 178, 1.6 degrees. So let's paint that in here. Rotation, A, H, R, Y. Goes on the left, anterior, 1.6 degrees. Now, I still think that this is the single hardest measurement for us to get. But if we look at the bottom of it and we look at the top of it and we cross compare like I showed you, it gives you a couple more perspectives on the same view. And what's nice is that you can draw a line on one picture. And when you upload a different picture, it overlays the same angle of that. And is that that we just drew match up with anything down here it can be hard to say sometimes. And so that's why I say this is still a work in process. I also am not super comfortable with these because of the slice we took wasn't through the bottom of those joints, but more through the middle of them when we were trying to expose more of that dens. So it may have trimmed off a little bit more here and that's why it's cutting short. I'm not sure. But we're pretty much done with that. The last thing we need to analyze is our C over A. So let's import our C over A film. 
And if we go to measure and three point circle finder, we can put a point right in that junction, right in that junction. And then we can kind of play with this circle till we find a best fits looking condylar circle. We can also do it for axial circle. So we'll put one right on the top of C2, right on the top of C2 and play with that till I'm finding what looks like a pretty good axial circle. And that's what I'm getting. So we need to do our condylar and our axial circle off of one view. And the reason why is because this program is measuring these circles in terms of centimeters. And so if we took a slightly larger screenshot of the condylar circle and a different smaller screenshot of the axial circle, the centimeters wouldn't be comparative or relative to each other. And you have to get that C over A relative. It doesn't matter what the measurement system is as long as it's relative. And that's what we know is that if we use a diameter for our C over A, we have a 5.15 over a 759. 5.15 over a 7.59 C over A. Got it? And that's all the measurements we're going to need to do a full analysis. You know, you can kind of take a look here. You've got what looks like a contralateral pattern with an atypical C2 rotation, but a relatively small C2 rotation, and then an anterior atlas rotation, 1.6. So um, actually good size misalignment here, and I kind of expected it because not a lot of docs up here to take care of me. Now I'm in Santa Barbara, but what we're going to do is we've got to run the math, and then we're done. And so when I was in graduate school, Dr. James Beadle was working on this calculator. And I know he's definitely made some major advancements to it, but this was a very primitive version of it that does everything I need to do to suit my purposes. And so it's pretty straightforward for our ACD. What was our measurement? We had a left 2.4. So I'm going to put this in here as 2.4. Four. Our cervical spine was to the right, two, I'm sorry, to the right, 2.6. I said left, but it's right, 2.6. Right, 2.6. Our AFP was high on the left, which was the side of laterality, by 2.2 degrees. And in order to get the A over C at 2.2, then we need to double it. So our AFP was high 4.4 .4 degrees, which will give us a AFP of 2.2 .2 degree tilt, which is what we need for the math. My C2 is to the right, 0.75, right, 0.75, and my rotation was anterior 1.6, so anterior 1.6. And then our C over A was a 5.15, 5.15 over A 7.59, over A 7.59. And after all that, here's your vectors. You're going to need a Z of 15, and you're going to need a Y of anterior 6. And that's where I'm at on this right now. I don't think this is as good as it's going to get, but I... I think that's a pretty good start and most of the patients that I've been adjusting using this form of analysis are really doing quite wonderfully. So I'm really excited to be using this views because it's things we never could have seen on x-ray and our analysis is just going to get sharper and sharper the more we develop this. So I hope that this video is helpful for anybody exploring doing an orthogonal analysis with a cone beam CT scan. I'll be presenting on this at the Advanced Orthogonal Annual Symposium. I'll be showing some patient cases. Um, look out for more videos. I'm going to continue down this journey of figuring out how to use functional neurology to remove ocular misalignments and other such things that are contributing to head tilts, ultimately in the hopes of helping patients hold longer and better. So if you think this video... So if you think this video was helpful please uh, give me a comment, please send it to your friends, 
And please continue helping me down this path together to make the world a little bit of a healthier place. And good luck on everything with the coronavirus and stay safe, my friends. I will talk to you next time.